Today's top stories at NBR, what Pacific Edge plans to spend its capital raise on, a $7.5 billion investment in New Zealand data centre infrastructure, the inexorable rise in mortgage lending, and there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, a wrap of the day's top business stories from the Authority in New Zealand Business News since 1970, nbr.co.nz. It's Thursday, September 23rd. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks so much for joining us. The chair of the NZX-listed Fonterra Shareholders Fund has reacted with dismay to the co-op's plan to cap its size, saying it undermines one of the fund's key purposes – The listed fund offers non-farmer investors a stake in Fonterra's dividend stream and provides a market for the co-op's farmers to sell the economic rights to their shares. The fungibility of shares and units helped create a liquid market price for co-op shares as part of Fonterra's trading among farmers rejig in 2012. Fonterra's restructuring proposal announced today would prevent any further shares being acquired by the fund, capping its size at the current level. In a statement posted to the NZX, fund chair John Shewan said the fund was disappointed with Fonterra's proposal. Cancer diagnostics company Pacific Edge will spend a large chunk of its proposed $80 million capital raise to double its sales team in the United States to gas up and accelerate its growth there. And the company said it would likely announce a new chief executive in the next month. Pacific Edge this morning went into a trading halt as it announced the capital raise, including a retail offer of up to $20 million. The company has also completed its dual listing on the ASX via a foreign-exempt listing. The company, which had earlier this month denied it was raising capital, Capital, despite detailed information being released about an offer to the ASX, said it was raising capital to capitalise on recent commercial milestones and accelerate its growth strategy, particularly in the US. Amazon Web Services is investing $7.5 billion over the next 15 years in New Zealand data centre infrastructure, which it believes will contribute 1,000 jobs to the country and $10.8 billion to GDP in that period. The new AWS Asia-Pacific Auckland region will be owned and operated by a local AWS entity in New Zealand, joining 25 AWS data centre regions globally. The region will have three so-called availability zones, which are separate physical locations, with one or more data data centres. The exact locations have not yet been revealed. The world's three major cloud service providers, AWS, Microsoft and Google, have not had physical local data centres in New Zealand until now, which means that any of their customers' data is stored offshore. But all three are now developing local cloud points of presence. The Financial Markets Authority is mulling enforcement action after a review of credit card repayment insurance found both the product to be poor value as well as complacency among its providers. CCRI is an insurance product where a customer pays a premium, depending on the outstanding balance of their credit card, which covers some or all of any repayments due in certain circumstances, such as redundancy, illness or death. Joining the NBR's Hamish McNichol was FMA Director of Supervision James Grieg. We've seen that a number of the providers don't ever contact their customers. So potentially you were signed up into it by virtue of a tick box at the bottom of the form uh, or someone else filled it in for you. And then you just simply don't know that you're paying this additional premium for something that you potentially could never use. So, And there's no ongoing communication from the providers. So we saw that a number of providers say they never reach out, they don't send anything through, and they certainly don't assess the ongoing suitability of the product for that customer. FMA Director of Supervision James Grieg with Hamish McNichol there. New modelling by Tipunaha Matatini has suggested that if more than 90% of the total population is vaccinated, then the country would not need to go into lockdown in the event of future COVID-19 outbreaks. It offers a glimmer of an approach for businesses hurt by lockdowns, and Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said the government intended releasing soon an outline of how it would respond to future outbreaks. Achieving high vaccination rates, though, will be crucial to removing the need for lockdowns, with the modelling by the Centre of Research Excellence in Complex Systems showing just how serious an outbreak could be, even if 80% of the population was vaccinated. If we were to only vaccinate 80% of those over five, then there could still be 60,000 hospitalizations from COVID-19 and 7,000 fatalities over a one-year period, Professor Sean Hendy from the centre said. 
The inexorable rise in mortgage lending underpinned the bank's profits in the June quarter, albeit that they were 11% lower than their record-breaking March results. The country's nine major banks made a collective net profit of $1.45 billion in the three months to June, down from $1.64 billion the previous quarter, KPMG's latest survey of the sector shows. In comparison, the sector made a $776.9 million net profit in the COVID-hit June 2020 quarter, down 13% on the prior three months. Mortgages now represent nearly 64% of the bank's total loan book, up from 59% two years ago. Meanwhile, consumer, business and agricultural lending declined in the quarter. Business lending has dropped, now accounting for 19.9% of the bank's loan portfolio, compared with 22.5% in June 2019, while agricultural lending has also fallen, making up 12.5% of their business, compared to 14.2% two years ago. Get the full details of those stories, along with all our breaking business news, columns and opinion at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR, in her first column for NBR, Rachel Smalley looks at different leadership styles in tough times, while Tim Hunter examines what America's Cup posturing can teach us about public finance. I'm Paul Brennan. Join me again from around lunchtime tomorrow for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then same time, same place again, right here from 5.30 and through the weekend for another NBR This Week.